In this video, I'm going to share with you many of the research tricks and tips that I have gathered over my years of researching for various projects. We'll look at a few different resources you can tackle, particularly some kind of out of the box resources that I've been using over the years to gather research in various domains. Let's get started. To begin with, you are looking at my favorite research resource. This is academia.edu. With academia.edu, once you sign up, and I'm going to just use a very quick Google sign up process. I actually am already signed up for this service uh, with another account. The free version will find and read uh, full text papers. Let's get started by entering a search term. With the basic results, I will receive access, as you can see, to a variety of resources that might actually support my research. With the free version, you're only able to view the top 10 results available. But if your search terms are strong enough, those top 10 results should be enough for what you're after. One unique aspect of academia.edu that I really appreciate is I can refine the recommendations. So daily, now that I've signed up, academia.edu will send me a full paper based on my interests, and I can uh, stress which filters I want. So peer-reviewed is typically going to ensure that I'm getting uh, only scholarly resources sent to my inbox. If I leave that unchecked, I could be sent anything, including unpublished research papers that are really just students uploading their papers to academia.edu before they have been assessed or vetted by experts. So I'm going to check uh, peer-reviewed. And I actually know that I, I don't mind how far back my research goes, so I'm going to leave the slider 1930 to 2021. Um, I do need my research to be in English, although I could uh, put it in the other languages that I speak, but I'd and then I can choose uh, whether or not I want to get PowerPoints, um, journal articles, conference papers. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of PowerPoints. I do want books, journal article, articles, or conference papers, and others pretty broad, uh, so I don't want to miss out on anything. I'm going to go ahead and save that. So now that I have saved, the other uh, aspect to remember is once you've started researching with academia.edu, it does remember your reading history. So if you forget an article or you think you lost one, you can always click back into your profile and look at your reading history. So that's academia.edu. Now this resource I have referenced already uh, in the first week of class, but the Internet Archive is one of my uh, favorite resources as well, particularly when I am looking for domestic history examples, which is one branch of my research practice. So the Internet Archive actually archives a variety of resources. Um, there, That includes like websites, so there's actually the Wayback Machine, which holds a snapshot of a website in time. So as websites evolve or are developed or change, uh, the Internet Archive actually preserves how a website looked on a certain day. So if you reference a website in your materials, say in uh, 2021, and somebody's reading your paper in 2022, and that reference is no longer on the website, you might be able to use the Wayback Machine to prove what it looked like on the day you looked at it in 2021. There are also full text books. That includes an open library that you can use to borrow books because some books are not available um, for just full access. You can actually borrow them for free through the open library. Uh, or you can find uh, open source crea Creative Commons or public domain books in full text uh, in the Internet Archive. That includes magazines and journals. So some of my domestic, domestic history research, I use uh, journals that are in full text from like the 1900s and 1920, 20s and 30s. There are also full length archival films. This includes a lot of great uh, B-roll from the 1940s and 50s. There's audio, television series, uh, software, images, audio files, and the Internet Archive also has a game emulator that preserves public domain games or games that have moved into the public domain through a digital curation resource. So if you're researching game arts or the history of game arts, 
you can not only find that art preserved in the Internet Archive, you can also actually experience the game as it was intended to be played using the emulator. One of my favorite things to research on Internet Archive is domestic history, and so I often will look for full text magazines in this format. And here are a couple uh, right here. I'll just click on one of them so that you can see how it looks in uh, Internet Archive format. Notice how you can see the full issue, and I can actually page through. Another aspect of the Internet Archive I want to draw your attention to is how you can select here exactly what it is you want to hone in on to research just by selecting these buttons at the top. So through books, notice I can borrow books and use the open library. Again, this is a free account and you can borrow books anywhere from an hour at a time to 14 days at a time. I'm just going to click on all books. Notice I am searching the metadata and it can be a little difficult to search through the Internet Archive when you first get uh, started using it because it is organized by keyword, um, not necessarily by uh, terms that you're used to. So if you know the exact title uh, that you're looking for, that can help you. Um, or if you know some keywords that it might be likely to be organized under, that's another uh, helpful hint. So this here is the uh, Illustrated Art Journal Catalog. Uh, categorized as being open source or public domain. But if I did choose a more contemporary book, like uh, probably this one here, I'm familiar with this author. Ah, so as you can see, the full text is here, but I would either have to buy it or log in and borrow it through the open uh, library. And let's say I uh, want to look at some video here. I'm just going to do a quick video search. Notice how there's a television archive and a movie archive. When I was writing one of my books, Return of the Loving Dead, one of the features of the book included a medicine that made zombies um, docile. We called it mortifalin or mortifalin. And I created a uh, video ad for that book using archival material uh, featuring Betty White. Uh, she had an entire television series here in this television archive collection that was in the public domain. And so I was able to create that video using just archival material. So I just wanted to draw your attention to this. It can be useful to you both as a maker and as a researcher. Another tool available to you for research while you're in the state of Maine is the Digital Maine Library. Maine has made available to its citizens a variety of academic databases that you can search directly through the Digital Maine Library interface. If you know exactly what database you are looking for, you can use the A to Z uh, index to select that specific database, such as the Fine Arts and Music Collection. Um, but I'm actually going to go ahead and click this multi-database search and search all of them at once. When I search all of the da databases at once, I do want to make sure that full text is selected so that I am able to see the whole article and not just an abstract. And I'm also going to select scholarly or peer-reviewed articles because as part of my research, I do need to collect and ensure that I am getting objective, scholarship, evidence-based, or study-based research to support whatever it is that I'm writing in my own research project. If I leave this open, it's going to pull back newspaper articles and other types of periodicals that may not support or validate my claims uh, using evidence. It may actually instead be more topical, entertainment-based, or journalistic. So again, full text, scholarly peered, and then I'll enter my search terms. And note that my search terms pulled back 253 results. And as I scan, I can expand my search or limit my search further. And I notice that the earliest uh, article was from 1993, and the latest article is more recent. I can tell um, whether or not I have full text immediately right here by clicking uh, PDF full text would actually give me a PDF of the full article. And I'm just going to scan these titles and see if any of these are interesting to me. So recycled sculptures is pretty close to my uh, research question. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up that PDF full text. I can download this. Alternatively, I'm going to uh, hit head back to my search terms. 
I'm going to head back to my search terms and notice this article here. Let's say that this fits my search terms. Full text finder is a feature that will actually link me out outside of the website that I'm currently on to find the full text somewhere else. I'm just going to go ahead and open the page in a new window. Now this looks like an interesting article. I'm going to go ahead and click into this article so I can read a little more about it. Here's its description. I can get a Google Book preview, and here at the bottom is the HTML of the article itself. This article looks like it will be useful to me. So I'm going to go ahead and save the full PDF. So as you can see, the Digital Main Library offers you some complete academic research tools that are pretty handy. Another great research tool for you is the Main State Library. Now, depending on where you're from, particularly if you're in low residency, you may have access to other state libraries. And in a moment, I'll show you the Library of Congress as well. But for now, because you are in the state of Maine, let me share with you the Main State Library resources. There are several aspects that you can use uh, for the state library directly through the Joanne Waxman Library, as you've probably already learned in your library session. And of course, there's also the Digital Maine Repository right here. Uh, here you can research Maine historical newspapers, special collections that are in the archives, government documents such as land grants uh, and land rights and information about our First Nations, as well as collections from the state of Maine. Just enter your search terms and see what you can find. So entering the search term art broadly as it is, you can see that I've pulled um, 9,444 references in Maine, and I'm just curious uh, what comes up for newspapers. So here's an interesting article where the word art must be referenced in some capacity from 1883. I'm just going to go ahead and download that and take a look. There's some art right on the front page. I bet that's where the, the key term comes from. But as you can see, this is a full historical reference with the entire newspaper archived and available for me to review, just as if I was using uh, the old-fashioned microfiche at the library directly. So again, that is what we have available in the digital repositories uh, for Maine. So I might use some of these uh, antiquated newspapers or perhaps even special books or books in the book collection or other collections that are in the state of Maine. If I wanted to share um, historical uh, significance for my own pieces, or perhaps if I could find some articles about artists that have influenced me in the, in the past, particularly Maine artists, because this is the Maine State Library. But again, digital repositories exist in many of the states. So if you look up the digital repositories for your area, you might find something useful there. If you're looking for a digital repository of anything historical, the Library of Congress is definitely your place to start. Library of Congress has, of course, multiple materials that you can search for. But when I am looking for resources that will supplement my historical research, this tends to be where I start. So I'm actually just going to look up historical films. And one of the things, if I had gone into advanced research, I would see this as well. But over here, notice how I can refine the date range. So I want films before 1899, just to see what I can find. And look, here's a couple, kind of keeping it open just to see what's out there. Fun in Camp. So an early film, 1899, restored in 1996 by the Library of Congress. And look, the original footage is here. I can download it. There is also a great collection in the Library of Congress of slave narratives. So in the 1930s, um, there was a major concerted effort to collect the narratives of individuals who had been held uh, as slaves while slavery was still legal before it was abolished. 
And so the Library of Congress has quite a, a vast collection of these narratives. And some of them are auditory. I'm, I'm not sure if any of them are film. I haven't actually observed any film ones myself, but there are definitely written and uh, audio versions of these narratives. And these can be extremely rich and insightful into what life was like, um, particularly in segregated America. I hope this video has been helpful to you in establishing some research strategies and a few different tools on the web that I have used historically for my own research. Just a few more caveats about conducting research. It'll be very important in your final research project, particularly at the graduate level, that you demonstrate that you have obtained scholarly resources. Scholarly means peer-reviewed and evidence-based. It is scholarship that is contributing to the discipline. So peer-reviewed means that it was vetted by other experts in the discipline. And evidence-based means that there is some evidence, uh, particularly scientific or socio-scientific, that vets whatever it is that is being claimed in the documentation. So to find scholarly resources, especially for your research, you may have to think a bit outside the box because you are doing scholarship on artists. A good place to look is art historians and critical theorists about artists. In addition to those primary accounts that you might get from contemporary or uh, historical artists themselves. So as you are conducting your research, Pay special attention and focus in finding those scholarly resources that can validate your claims. I'd like to make sure that in your annotated bibliography, you have several objective evidence-based peer-reviewed resources to select. So I'm happy to help you with this. Please feel free to ask me for a one-on-one -on -one conference and we can do a deep dive in your own research project uh, individually, just the two of us. Thanks so much.